In this episode, a couple's relationship is put to the test when parents demand constant supervision. Tune in as they stand up against intrusive rules and fight for their adult freedom. But first, am I the butthole for only wanting to take my niece to a concert? Posted by Double Violinist 479. I, 26 year old female, have a niece, 15 year old female. She is my sister's oldest child and for the longest time was her only child. My sister started dating her boyfriend who has two older boys, 16 and 17, about a two years ago. He and his kids now live with my sister. A little backstory. My niece and I have always been close. We have very similar interests and she is a mini me. We read, listen to music and enjoy the same foods. I love her as if she were my own kid. I recently, about a year ago, moved out of my hometown, so I don't get to spend as much time with my niece as I used to. The move was hard on her, but we do still get to talk on the phone and text each other plus hang out on my occasional visits back home. My niece has confided in me that the two boys have been giving her a hard time at home. They lock her in her room, steal food and blame it on her, and constantly call her nasty names with no repercussions from either their dad or my sister. I spoke to my sister about this and she said that I should stay out of it since they weren't my kids and she knows how to handle her household. The issue? Last weekend I went for my usual visit and of course my niece and I started talking about music. While talking we saw that one of our favorite artists is going on tour. She asked if we could go see them and I told her I would talk to her mom about it as we would have to make a foray drive and most likely stay the night in a hotel. I also gave her the condition that she had to get A's in her classes for me to take her. She agreed. When I went to drop off my niece, I spoke to my sister one-on-one -on -one and told her about the concert. While talking to her about it, she cut me off asking why I wasn't taking the boys as well. I looked at her a little confused and told her that those boys were her boyfriend's kids, and I had no bond with them, not for lack of trying though. They never want to hang out, don't join in on family events, and always disappear when everyone gets together, they disrespect her only daughter, and are constantly being suspended at school. I told her I would not reward that type of behavior and would only be taking my niece, especially if it was on my dime. My sister said I was an inconsiderate b-word and in butthole, and that I was playing favorites with her kids. I told her that I tried repeatedly to hang out with them, get them to talk to me or even have a meal with me family, but they always refused and shut down when asked questions about themselves. My sister said I would not be allowed to take my niece until I took the boys too, and she wouldn't give me a dime for any of the trip. I told her I would give her time to think it over, and we would talk later, but she said she wouldn't change her mind. So am I the butthole in this situation? I don't think I am since I don't even know if they like the artist we are wanting to see, but I feel horrible now. I have no idea what to tell my niece. So what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below. It's concerning that the sister seems more invested in her boyfriend's sons behaving badly than addressing their disrespectful actions towards her own daughter. Why is the niece being punished for wanting a positive experience? Comment from Parsimonia Salad. Not the butthole and your sister is really failing your niece here. There is no reason a 15-year-old girl cannot have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with her aunt. It doesn't sound like the boy's gaff anyway. And you set the all as in your class's requirement. Did the boys fulfill that? Those boys are also bullying your niece. If things get bad, she should talk to a counselor at school, who might be able to get through to your sister where you cannot. Edit. And there is nothing for it but to tell your niece the truth. OP replied. The boys are currently borderline failing their classes. They have been put in in school suspension and have also been suspended before for fighting in class. I have told my niece about talking to a counselor, but she said she's okay for now and just ignores them. I am keeping a close eye on her, though to be on the safe side. Am I the butthole for refusing to go on a trip with parents because they treat me like a teenager? Posted by Character Western 8757. So here's what's going on. I've been in a committed relationship with my boyfriend Kevin, 27-year-old male, since senior of college. My parents and rest of my family love him to unalive, and my parents have lovingly threatened me that if I ever let him go, that I am going to be disowned. So I say all that to say that my parents love and trust him, sounds good right? Wrong. My parents harbored the delusion that I, and by extension Kevin, am 15 years old and need constant supervision from my non-existent teenage hormones and bad decisions. What do I mean? No PDA in front of them, most we can do is handholding, we couldn't even kiss at New Year's for fuck's sake. And of course, no sleeping together while staying with my parents, even though we have been living together for four years. My parents have a friend who is going to let them use their lake house over the long 4th of July weekend and the whole family was invited. Here's where crap goes down. Parents called me up and explained that my sister and her husband would be in one room, 
parents in the other and me and Kevin would be sleeping with their kids in the other two respectively. I just about lost my crap. I told them that we're damn near 30 and they want us sleeping with preteens and big kids. They said that under no circumstances are we allowed to sleep together. I said fine, we'll just rent an Airbnb in the area or a hotel. They said to not be childish and accept the arrangements. From there it was an argument that devolved into them not respecting our relationship and treating us like adults. They said if we don't like it, then we don't have to come. I said fine, then we weren't. They again said that I was being childish and selfish and to think of Kevin and his wants. I said not to mention him since they insisted on treating him like an untrustworthy horny teenager. Now here's where I may really be the butthole, I said me, and Kevin will take our own trip where people will treat us like adults, and we can sleep together in a big bed all day. Butt butt naked. My parents said I was disgusting and just hung up the phone. I knew it was kinda of a f up them to say, but I was so frustrated. I told Kevin about what happened later that evening, and he said that I handled it completely wrong. He didn't me standing up for our relationship, but he said I didn't have to go so far. He said the sleeping accommodations were annoying but he could have sucked it up for a free trip. And that I didn't consult him about what he wanted to do. I agreed to that but I said I didn't feel bad because I was fed up with my parents bullcrap. It's been a few days now and there is no word from parents. My sister who dealt with the same issues says she found the whole situation hilarious. But I'm starting to feel bad about how I handled the situation, not really what I said, and maybe costing Kevin a chance to go on the trip. So Reddit am I the butthole for how I responded to my parents? It seems unfair for parents to treat their adult children like teenagers and restrict their relationship freedoms under the guise of protection. The situation raises questions about respecting boundaries and growing up in a healthy way. Avery Brown Girl Nerd commented. Not the butthole. You are two consenting adults, regardless if you are committed or not. I never understood how certain generations like to treat us like children teens. Honestly, it is very insulting. Honestly, stand your ground. If anyone is acting childish, it's them. Plus I did literally lulled when I read this. Me and Kevin will take our own trip, where people will treat us like adults, and we can sleep together in a big bed all day, but butt naked. Kudos, OP. A comment from VT Momo. Not the butthole. I think you did good standing your ground and saying you wouldn't attend if you were going to be treated as kids. You maybe lost your nerves and said something too graphic for the way your parents seem to be. No big deal. Your sister's right about laughing about the situation. Check out our playlist with all our videos. You can find it in the description box below. Am I the butthole for asking to be willed the house so I am not homeless and jobless? Posted by Atlo. I, 30-year-old female, asked my fiancé, 32-year-old male, to be in his living will as the recipient of the house we live in if something happened. We got engaged a month ago, I want to get married next year, he wants to wait two years. He said I will not be in his will until after we're married. We have been together a little over a year but dated for three in middle high school. When we got back together, we both admitted we always loved and wanted it to be each other. When we reconnected, I was living halfway across the world making 200k a year with plans to buy my own 500k condo. He had an established life and extremely successful business where we grew up. He basically told me it wouldn't work if we're living a 15 hour plane ride from each other and if we wanted to have a real chance I would have to quit my job and move home. He also stated in previous conversations that one of many reasons his previous marriage failed was because she did not want to travel and he wanted me to be able to travel with him and help grow his business. He offered to put me on salary at a quarter of what I was making to have the flexibility to travel, help with the business and help him with his son. 3. I was very hesitant to quit my job to pursue a relationship with him, but it was what I always wanted. I told him my concerns about losing my well-paying job and how I was about to buy a condo of my own. He said that we could buy a house together in our second main location we work. Unfortunately, his business is still doing well but not well enough to buy the second home together I feel like I was promised. Today he had to create a living will and told me that everything goes to his sister. The house that we both live in now but is only in his name, all his cars, businesses, investments and real estate. His reasoning is why should you get what I spent the last 12 years building when you weren't around. He got angry, so angry, when I got upset that I don't get the house willed to me. I tried to explain to him that I sacrificed the opportunity to be a homeowner to pursue our relationship. Left the career I built a brilliant reputation in for the last decade. How I was promised co-ownership on a property, but that has still not transpired. Now if something happened to him, I would be left jobless and without a home. I feel like I don't have a safety net. No security. I don't want to be selfish for asking to be willed an asset I didn't help obtain.
or morbid for being so concerned about him passing away, but he has some very unsafe hobbies. Flies planes, rides sport bikes, and has several supercars he drives like a madman. He saw this conversation as me being upset I won't financially gain from his passing. My feelings I tried to explain were coming from a desire to feel secure and the fear of ending up without a home. So am I the butthole for asking to be willed the house? It seems unfair for the fianc to withhold the house from his partner's will, especially after she sacrificed her career and financial stability for their relationship. The lack of transparency and shared ownership raises concerns about trust and commitment in their partnership. Hypothetical Kazus commented. Girl run. Icy ability 4240 commented. What do you get out of this deal? Nothing. It sounds like your fiancé has an inexpensive nanny, housekeeper and employee, while you had your own life, money and freedom. Your life is not your own. It's his. What happened to your prior savings? I will leave and go back to your prior life where you had your own life. Am I the butthole for not letting my spouse drive my new car? Posted by Corrupt Corey. So we bought a brand new car two weeks ago. Six days after buying the car and only 300 miles in, her and her sister were having a girl's day. They made it four blocks when my wife ran over a large chunk of concrete blowing out the tire and rim. It cost me $1,000 to fix and about a week without a car. I got the car back last night and she asked if she could use it to get the groceries and she was upset when I told her no. Please note that we have a second car that she drives on a regular basis. It seems unusual for someone to ask to use a recently repaired car for errands so soon after an expensive repair. Is it reasonable to expect the car to be driven again so soon? Bloopfate Storm commented. Not the butthole. She has had the privilege of the new car while you got hand-me-downs. The first time, you get the new car and she is reckless with it. Nope. She will be fine. A comment from Bread Gloves. Well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of her own actions. Not the butthole, not responsible, not her car. Would I be the butthole for exposing my coworker to his pregnant fiance? Posted by Adventurous Gazella 7. My coworker, 34M, sent a message on Facebook Messenger back around Christmas time to me, 21 year old female, asking to hang out sometime. I responded to him by saying, Oh yeah, feel free to join me and other coworkers the next time we go out for dinner or drinks. And received a response sometime later saying I was talking just me, and you maybe but that sounds good. I was completely taken aback and my mind started racing. I started thinking. Oh my god, is this guy actually hitting on me and asking me on a date right now? Doesn't he know that I have a boyfriend? Doesn't he have a girlfriend anyway? Keep in mind, although we are co-workers, he works in a completely different department from me, so there has been very minimal overlap at work. To put it in perspective, we have had maybe two casual conversations prior to this, and any other conversations would have been work-related over teams. I hadn't taken any time to learn about his personal life but I had the distinct idea that he had a girlfriend, so I decided to do some digging into his Facebook while deciding what to do. Come to find out he was not only in a relationship but he was also engaged to the woman he was seeing. She was incredibly attractive and also very pregnant. She was probably in or had just entered her third trimester and the baby was, according to both of their Facebook posts and pictures, his. On top of that apparently he began seeing her during her previous pregnancy to another man and had been basically raising her other child as his own. His fiancé had made a Facebook post about how grateful she was that he was there for her during one of the hardest times of her life. I felt betrayed for her to think that her fiancé was seeking out the company of other women when she seemed like such a kind-hearted and beautiful person. I obviously took all of this to HR and they agreed that it was inappropriate and took action, but not in the way I hoped. Apparently this co-worker of mine is close friends with the owners of the company, so they sat down and had a discussion with him personally. He wasn't fired and still works at the company to this day. I don't think his fiancé was told about the situation, and thinking back on it, I kind of think she deserves to know. Would I be the butthole if I exposed him? It's concerning that the co-worker was able to engage in such behavior despite being engaged and having a child, and it raises questions about the company's policies regarding employee conduct. A comment from Superman530. You would be the butthole. Sorry, this seems over the top. First off, why would you expect HR to fire him? Should asking to hang out with an opposite gender colleague be cause for termination? That's insane. HR's actions seem appropriate. Now if he asks you out again and after you've made it clear that the advances are unwanted, that's different. Second, I agree with you that this seems fishy, but the dude hasn't exactly done anything. All you know for sure is that he's interested in having one-on-one -on -one time with you. You don't know for sure that he wants to get in your pants. Not every request like this is x -wall. 
and since this was over messenger, you don't have nonverbal communication to help you figure it out either. Simply put, you shouldn't destroy a relationship when you don't know for sure what he actually was trying to do. That still holds even if your assumption seems likely. A comment from Bipolar Salarmalar. I am going against the grain here and saying German to you too, because all the people here saying you don't know his intentions are just plain wrong. He is 34 and engaged. You are a 21-year-old girl. You two have had almost no interaction, and when you said he was welcome to join you and others, he specified he wanted alone time. Dude wanted to get in your pants. If you want more of this content, consider subscribing because we post new Reddit stories every single day. Check out our playlist with all our videos. You can find it in the description box below. Have a miavelous day and see you in the next one.